Hello, everyone. Uh, we are going to present you the story uh, about how that became a test. It is a story about the new design of airflow system tests. It's going to have some technical parts, but I hope it will be interesting to all of you. At the end of the talk, I'm sure you will have knowledge to start writing your own system test in Airflow. So before we start, let us quickly introduce ourselves in the order of speaking. My name is Mateusz Nojek. I'm a QA engineer and open source enthusiast from Poland, and I love to find improvements to quality of software of any type. Hello, my name is Eugen. I work in Cloud Composer. Um, and I'm happy to talk about airflow system test. And I'm Bartomi Hirsch, um, automation tester in Cloud Composer team. Okay, so this whole talk and redesign of the system test would not be possible without Yarek Potyuk, who helped us to shape the idea and implement it in a way that we achieved both simplicity and usability at the same time. So now I'm going to start with describing to you the backstory of this initiative and how the final solution solved the problems we had throughout this journey. So Airflow operators are the core functionality that, that enables Airflow users to automate their processes. It's this fundamental feature that needs to work in order to provide a value and stability to our pipelines. That's why the operators need to be tested properly in order to maintain their quality. Without tests, we can't be certain whether they function as we expect. So the problem with the test is that besides they're there, it doesn't mean we can trust the software. Well, we need to run the test to have this trust, right? So let's say we have tests and we run them. Is that enough? No, we can have hundreds of tests running every day and the software can still be bad because the tests also need to be of high quality to assure that the software is of high quality. So what else? The results. We need to look into the results and make sure that the tests do not fail. There's one more thing, automation. So through automation, we can make the process faster and we can eliminate a tester at least from some parts of it. So here's what I call a testing trinity. So it's high quality tests running automatically with a good report analysis. So going back to Airflow, we have many different tests there. We have unit tests, we have integration tests, and we have system tests. This is the celebrity of, of this talk. So I'm going to tell you about how we decided to redesign Airflow system tests and how they look like now. We recognize an issue that the system tests in Airflow are not compliant with the testing trinity. Okay, we have them, but are they executed? Not really. Are they of high quality? Some of them, but, but not all. Are they automatically executed as a part of the CI process? No. Do we investigate the results properly? Well, I don't know. So we focused on all of those areas and started working on the plan. The plan finally became an airflow improvement proposal number 47 and was successfully approved. It is now being finalized. And I'm going to tell you how it improved the airflow in overall. So before we start, let me quickly explain what are the system tests in relation to the airflow. So system test purpose is to make sure that the software can run from the beginning to the end of the common workflow. So in airflow, it's all about running a DAC and checking if it's executed properly in an environment as close as possible to the one that the user run. So we do, we do not check any corner cases. We do not check any, not, we do not expect errors. We expect a full run of the DAC with a success state. So let me describe how the design evolved. So first we address the problem of maintainability of the test. Before the AAP 47 was introduced, system tests were stored in two separate places and only together they could be considered as a whole. For each test, we had a file containing a DAC that was going to be run, and we had a triggering script implementing a Python wrapper for the test. What we have now is only one file, what we call a self-contained DAC. So why it's self-contained? Because we do not need any other data to run the DAC. All we need is there inside this one file. That's it. 
So when we designed this, we realized that there are some small issues around it that we need to address. For example, before the AAP, the setup and teardown of the tests were handled by PyTest. Let's say we need some special account or we expect uh, a file in some external storage. That was all done by PyTest, but why not to do it with Airflow? Airflow has so many operators that it can handle nearly all of these operations. So now if there is some kind of action that needs to be taken prior to the test, it's highly recommended to do it using Airflow operators. So we start through writing the test and step upon another challenging task. The teardown task was, all, was not always running as we expect. So it was related to how Airflow handles the states of the tasks. And uh, just a quick reminder about how these parts, uh, these, these parts of the test work together. So we have a setup, we have body and teardown. In setup, we prepare the environment for the test. In body, we execute it. And in teardown, we clean up after the test. So when something fails in any of those parts, the test should fail. And the teardown part is the one that should be triggered always when if the test, it, even if the test uh, failed before completion. And that was the problem with our design. So when there was a fail during the test, the teardown task was executed and its state was propagated to the DAP, shadowing the real state of the test. In other words, uh, when there was a fail, the test should have a failed state, but because the teardown task is sometimes needed to clean up after the test, it's passed Stay, it's, it's past state, so was assigned as the final state of the running system test. So you may now ask why. And to understand it, I need to explain the concept of the leaf nodes. The leaf nodes are all these tasks that do not have children, just like leaf in the tree cannot have another branch growing from it. So there can be, of course, many leaves in many leaf nodes in the DAC. Uh, just like there are many leaves in the tree. And in Airflow, the state of the entire duct is determined by the state of the leaf nodes. When at least one leaf node fails, the whole duct run is considered as uh, failed too. So all leaf nodes need to pass in or order to have a pass state of the duct. And because the leaf node can actually be a teardown task and its status is then propagated to the duct, and, and we don't want that because the, the state of the teardown task can shadow the state of the failing task somewhere in between. So we lose the information about the potential bug in the airflow operators. So to overcome this problem, we needed to create something we call the watcher task. Fortunately, it can be done entirely using the built-in features of the airflow. So consider this simple duck. The watcher is a task that uses the trigger rules and is a child of any other task in the duck. Its responsibility is to watch over all tasks running in the duck and report if any of them fail. And because the watcher is the child of all other tasks, it means that it's also a leaf node. So if any of the tasks fail, the duck will have the proper state assigned because the watcher will report it. To achieve that, we use a triggering rule one fail, which tells the watcher to trigger when at least one upstream task fails. And that's it. So how to use it in the code will be later shown by Bartek. And these are the ones of the major changes we introduced within our proposal. Uh, we do not have enough time to cover them all and maybe be a bit boring. So I'm gonna pass the mic to Eugene, who will explain to you what is the value from this new design. Thank you very much, Mateusz. OK, so I would like to talk about what is the value of this AAP and how Airflow users are affected. As an outcome of the AAP, we have simplified design, which makes development and maintenance of system tests simple as well as reduces the amount of effort to execute them. The latter allows us to run system tests on a regular basis and therefore preserve high quality of the release provider operators and airflow in general. 
Basically, the value for users of Airflow or authors of the DAX is simply the high quality of the provider operators. Currently, there are many issues related to how Airflow operators work or not work, and therefore simplifying design of system tests and reducing effort to set up continuous integration or having automated testing in place is going to definitely decrease the amount of bugs. It is also worth to note that the documentation for Airflow provider operators is generated from source code of system tests. So having system tests executed successfully and not failing assures examples in Airflow documentation are correct and work properly. Running system tests on a regular basis helps to keep documentation for provider operators up to date. If we are talking about Airflow developers, the value of the AAP outcome for them is a simple and straightforward process of adding new tests and little effort on maintaining existing ones. In the old design, there were some extra dependencies required in order to write, execute, and maintain tests, which created unnecessary complexity for the developers in the past. New simplifying design makes development and maintenance of these tests simple as well as reduces the amount of effort to execute, as I mentioned earlier, and therefore makes it possible to run system tests on a regular basis more easy. With the new design, the process is much more simple. Part of the AP was also to set up continuous integration that will run Airflow system tests. In the community, this part of the AAP is not yet done. However, there is already some effort made to move in this direction. In the Google Cloud Composer, we do have CI, which is running Airflow system tests for new versions of Airflow that we add to Composer and new versions of Google Provider package assuring high quality of Google provider operators for Cloud Composer customers. And now I would like to hand it over to Vartek, who is going to do live demo. Uh, thanks. Uh, let me share. Uh, OK, so I'm going to show you uh, how the new system test looks like. Mm. So the new system test, uh, or examples, uh, like we usually refer to them, are stored in the Airflow uh, GitHub repository under uh, test directory and uh, system directory. Uh, since we are still using PyTest for evoking the test, uh, we also have typical PyTest structure uh, for uh, with conf test uh, files. And we have provided this directory, which contains tests uh, for the given provider. Uh, right now, it's uh, Google and Elasticsearch. Each provider manages the structure uh, of the test. In our case, uh, we group the uh, system test uh, into related services. For example, we have the text to speech uh, service, uh, checkout service, uh, and we can see uh, the system test file uh, for the service. Uh, from the uh, from the user point of view, it looks like any other DAC uh, with few additions to help in system testing. And this particular operator, uh, cloud text to speech synthesize operator, uh, takes text input and synthesize audio file from it and store it uh, in the Google storage. Since it is the system test, we are not checking if the audio file was properly generated from the provided text. Uh, we are just interested if the whole uh, flow execute and succeed. So uh, at the top of the file uh, uh, in the new design, we define anything required for running the system test. And it's usually taken from the environment that is running the test. Uh, the, not uh, the notable part is how we simplify it and unify uh, how to define basic values for the test. Before, uh, every system test uh, defined their own uh, required variables. And to prepare environment to run, you needed to provide sometimes hundreds uh, of values. Uh, for example, each, uh, each DAC uh, need to have unique name. This can be an issue when running the test in parallel for different environment. I can imagine a situation uh, that a provider wants to run all tests for different versions uh, of the system uh, at the same time. If any of the tests use the same resources, uh, it's possible that the same test execute simultaneously uh, for different systems can lead to uh, collision. Mm, to avoid such, uh, such situation, uh, there need to be a, a defined environment variable called nfid, which should be generated randomly uh, in your environment. 
the value of this variable is being read at the beginning of each test and should be used uh, at, as a building part of the values of other data structures used across the test. These values should also include the DAC ID. Uh, thanks for that. Uh, each new data resource used in the test, which uh, will contain the NF ID and DAC ID, and the collision risk can be avoided. In this case, we can see the, uh, the bucket name, uh, which is constructed from DAC ID and FID. Thanks for that. We don't need to define it somewhere else in the environment to ensure it, it, it's, uh, its unique name. Uh, then, we, then we, of course, can define any other values needed for the DAC. In this case, for example, we define what, what text we want to process uh, by the cloud synthesized uh, operator. Uh, okay, uh, the, the DAC itself uh, consists of the three tasks. So we have the create bucket operator task, um, which is creating the, the bucket where our audio file will be stored. Uh, we have the uh, operator uh, which is under the test, so uh, cloud text to speech synthesize operator. Um, and at the end, we have the uh, delete bucket uh, uh, operator, uh, which works as a till down like uh, task. And because of that, uh, it has the uh, trigger rule all done mentioned by Mateusz. It means that uh, no matter the status of the previous uh, operators, if those pass or fail, we want to uh, remove the bucket uh, after the uh, after the test, so we don't have any uh, leftover uh, resources that could uh, use uh, use our paid data. And you can also see that uh, this uh, this file works as a uh, source for our documentation. Those markers as, are used by Sphinx to generate uh, the documentation. We can actually uh, go and see it. Uh, I have uh, here opened the page uh, uh, for uh, cloud, uh, cloud text to speech operator. And those parts are taken directly, uh, directly from the file. Uh, and by using the same file for the system test, we are ensuring that, that this code actually works. And in the, uh, in the past, sometimes we, we had documentation that uh, mentioned something that didn't even work. So it's very important uh, uh, that right now we, we, we combine those two, uh, two approaches. Uh, and this whole file uh, can be run in different ways, as a PyTest test uh, or as a DAC, a DAC itself. Uh, I will show you later uh, both ways. Uh, and in the end of the DAC, we have the uh, few lines uh, where we add our watcher uh, as dependency to each task. Uh, thanks for that, we, are, we ensure that uh, the DAC's DAC status after the test will be uh, always uh, uh, correct, no matter uh, if we have the tilde task or not. We also have uh, helper methods uh, that wrap over this file. So the PyTest uh, detects this as a uh, PyTest test. Okay, so let's try to run it in, uh, in PyTest. Uh, before you run a system test, you need to have environment prepared. Uh, in Google case, you might need, for example, the G GCP project configured. And if you are uh, testing other provider, you might need anything specific to that provider configured in your environment. The important part of the new design is that we are trying to keep this a separate topic from the system test itself. You can have uh, different environments, uh, use the Breeze, Airflow UI, Composer, and be able to, uh, to run the test. Uh, I have prepared environment already, and I use the breeze to run our test. So we can use uh, PyTest for it, uh, and just write the test system, providers, Google, and uh, text-to-speech. Yeah, you, you can see that the test is skipped. Uh, that's because you, if you are running the system test, you need to add extra uh, system marker with the name of the provider you wish to run. Uh, system tests usually take long time to run and may use paid resources. That's why they are not run by default. Uh, this behavior is automatic. So if you create provider directory, it will detect it and require the marker with the uh, your provider name to run the test. 
in our case, it is the system Google. Now it is executing. So while we are waiting, let's take a look how we also uh, check uh, if your environment is ready to, uh, to run the test. So we have the conf test file, and here we have various fixtures that checking if uh, proper variables required, uh, environment variables required to run the system test are uh, set. If they are not the set, the system test will not even start. So it will not take your time. Uh, there are some. Uh, there is one uh, general uh, environment variable required for all system tests. This is the system test NPD, and you can uh, define your own in, uh, environment variable or other resources uh, that are required uh, to system test uh, in conf test file in your provider directory. In case of the Google, uh, we uh, additionally required to define uh, the name of the uh, Google project that will uh, be used to execute the test. Okay, so we see that uh, the test, PyTest test passed, uh, but it is using the PyTest, so it's not that readable. We can just uh, verify that the test passed. Mm, so I think the, uh, sometimes it's better to use the a 4 ui uh, directory, mm, so we can use the same file, and I have prepared the composer uh, composing environment to it. Mm -hmm. So and already uploaded the the DAC file. Uh, so let me open the, yeah, I have the text-to-speech here. This is the same DAC, so I can just uh, trigger it. And let's, let's see how it runs. So in the graph, uh, we have our uh, three tasks. So create bucket, uh, the text-to-speech synthesized task itself, and delayed bucket. And of course, watcher, which uh, which is watching uh, for the status of the duck. And in the F UI, we have a bit more freedom. For example, we if something is failing, we can uh, go and see the log uh, directly and investigate it. Uh, okay. Uh, well, that has executed, um, and that's that's all for uh, our quick demo. Mm. When we worked on, on the system test uh, design, we also did the other work. So we, we refactor our CI. Uh, we prepared also the tools like recently added PyTest class for measuring the coverage of the system test. Uh, so this, of course, the part of the bigger in, uh, initiative to improve the quality uh, in iFlow. And we hope that with the new design, uh, it will be easier to write system tests uh, and it will encourage people to do it. Thank you, everyone.